Silver's Dark King Rayleigh, arguably one of the most handsome characters in all of One Piece. So, we all know how absurdly OP this man is. I mean, he's second only to the King of the Pirates, the strongest pirate of its era, and a rival to almost any top tier character in the One Piece world. Let me just say, Rayleigh is hands down one of my favorite characters of all of One Piece and so I decided that I had to make a what if on this man and throw Naruto a bone and give this man some insane hockey. So this is going to be a three part series covering what would happen if Naruto was Rayleigh's reincarnation. Enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. For starters, Naruto's going to be inheriting Rayleigh's killing looks and is going to be a ladies man at some point. But for now, we cover him currently running away from a bunch of villagers who are currently chasing him out of the village on his 6th birthday. Naruto at this point has just been revealed to be the nine-tailed fox about 2 years ago and his life has been pretty much a living hell ever since then. Naruto at this point has a backpack on, he has a ton of ramen, a little bowl, and pretty much anything that he could need to survive. He ends up running away from these villagers because they pretty much ended up going to his house and pretty much breaking his windows and trying to literally kill Naruto. He's trying his best and he's running with a sprained ankle as fast as he possibly can. These villagers at this point are just playing a sick game with him. But Naruto inevitably ends up essentially seeing this fence that says do not enter and Naruto goes on to jump over this fence. The villagers would watch in utter like happiness and confusion as Naruto enters the forest of death. Everybody watching this would think to themselves that he's a goner one way or another and they would proceed to essentially wait there for an hour until Naruto is pretty much gone from sight. Naruto would have traveled inside of the forest of death for so long that eventually he would have ended up stumbling across a small shack that nobody was living inside of. It seemed a lot dirt it seemed a bit dirty seeing as it hasn't been kept up for years but Naruto decided that this is better than nothing. So he ended up taking all of his stuff, putting it down, and when he ended up getting comfortable, he looked around and saw a strange sword. It was just like a knife sword, a double-sided long sword. And when Naruto looked at it, he picked it up and noticed just how heavy it was. It was in pristine condition. It was as if a swordsman had lived here before Naruto. Naruto wasn't exactly going to dwell on this and so just decided to put the blade down and try to pretty much survive for as long as he could. A week would go by and eventually Naruto would have run out of his food supply, eventually deciding that he's now going to have to go search for water, not only that but he's also going to have to go search for food. So Naruto would go out and decide that he needs to use that sword to defend himself but realize that he's far too weak to do so, so instead he ends up finding a couple of pieces of tree bark and uh, um essentially like sharpening a couple pieces of like like wood just so that he has like a little bit of a weapon he goes into the forest and luckily there is a good supply of water nearby that's safe for him so that's not going to be an issue but he ends up encountering a small pig or like a boar or something like that right when he sees this, he goes over to it to try to take it out, but he notices very quickly that a large bear came towards the direction of the pig and just tackled it and pretty much devoured it in front of him. Naruto watching this would decide that that's not happening to him, so he runs away as fast as he can as the bear just watches him run with his tail between his legs. Naruto ends up going back to that same river where he gets his water from and ends up realizing that he could probably fish for his food. He ends up essentially trying to dig through the water, trying to grab the fish with his hands, but he ends up realizing that he has a hard time. Hours and hours would pass by and eventually three days would go by with Naruto not eating anything but luckily drinking something. Naruto eventually ends up realizing that if he doesn't catch a fish, he's gonna die. And in a moment of desperation, it was as if all of Naruto's senses would have pretty much went off the charts. Naruto would have immediately known where the fish was gonna move using observation hockey for the first time as he stuck his hand in and grabbed the fish. From here, he held it up into the air and began cheering as loud as he possibly could. He then went on to cook the fish just like he would have in the in the scene where he met Hiruzen and he you know he gave 
gave Urus and the fish. That's basically what Naruto goes on to do. And following this little scene, Naruto goes on to essentially realize that whatever had just happened had definitely saved his life. He ends up trying to replicate that same feeling for a while, but it never exactly comes back. It only comes back in moments of desperation or so, or, 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 or at least that's what Naruto can suffice. After about a month of essentially just grubbing on fish, Naruto decides that he's sick of eating fish, so he wants to go kill an actual animal. He ends up encountering another small one that he decides that this is finally the time, and suddenly a bear actually ends up, or no, not a bear, but a giant snake would end up arriving and essentially curling itself around the, 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 the small animal. After devouring it with one gulp, it would turn its attentions towards Naruto and begin chasing him to the point where Naruto gets backed up into a corner and essentially just screams out leave me alone when this scream is let out the snake would pretty much pass out and this would lead to naruto wondering what had just happened he then goes on to essentially stab the snake in the head with his uh with his weapon and proceeds to essentially take it out deciding that he doesn't want to eat snake meat because that just sounds disgusting so he ends up going back home where he ends up wondering to himself what these strange abilities are asking himself if this is chakra maybe maybe he's discovered chakra without training naruto after realizing this would think to himself that that's honestly it's pretty cool and after about another month would go by this is finally when Hiruzen, the horrible, horrible guardian of Naruto, would finally realize that this dude is gone. Where's Naruto? Where is Naruto? He begins looking around, asking if anyone's seen him, and eventually he ends up finding out that he's in the forest of death. Fearing for Naruto's life, he ends up sending Kakashi into the forest to actually retrieve Naruto, who would be deep inside of a shack currently cooking one of his meals with longer hair than he would have had before. And Naruto would actually grown to like it. He decides that from now on, he's just going to let his hair grow out. And essentially what Naruto would do following this little altercation is basically go back to the village alongside Kakashi with these new powers in hand and a sword with him, as well as having a little bit of a hiding spot that he could always go to whenever he wants to train. So now that that's established, Naruto, once he's back into the village, Hiruzen would promptly apologize and tell Naruto that that will never happen again. He's made sure the villagers will never attack him again, and that if any of them do, then he'll end up pretty much uh, punishing them accordingly. Naruto says not to worry that being in the forest is actually a pretty good experience, and he actually got a lot stronger than he thought he would have from being there. Hiruzen ends up th saying to Naruto that that's good, and from here Naruto goes on to essentially just smile, going back to his house and eventually starting the academy in about two years, I believe. Once he's about eight years old, Naruto with this time would have ended up getting a lot of a better grasp over observation hockey, and also would have ended up dabbling a bit into armament hockey throughout the years. Also would have ended up doing a lot of push-ups and physical activity to make himself a lot stronger than he already was. Due to the fact that he is a Jinchuriki, his strength levels are already heightened. Plus the fact that now he has hockey inside of him and also trains even harder than he would have in the original to actually gain more muscle mass. Plus the fact that Rayleigh is just an absolute beast when it comes to physical strength. I mean, the man literally beat up Sea Kings with his bare hands. And it's not like it was just one, it was multiple. And in case you don't know what Sea Kings are or what hockey is, I'll probably forget to leave a video link down below of what hockey is, but you could just look it up. It's pretty simple. Basically, uh, observation hockey lets you let your sensory go off the charts you can like kind of see further into time like a couple seconds into the future to like dodge stuff armament hockey is like invisible black armor that like you can't actually see but it's 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 like theoretically there and then we have conquerors hockey which is essentially like bloodlust your will and you can knock people out with it it also helps you fight and stuff like that, and you know, there's a lot of uses for hockey all of all, all in and of itself. That said though, what basically ends up happening is Naruto, once he enters the academy, would look like a completely different person, with different drip than he would have had in the original. None of this orange jumpsuit or weird little goggles that he would have had in his head. And instead of being some annoying goofball, Naruto would pretty much spend his time kind of... Um, just kind of being in the class and being that chill dude that nobody really messes with. While Naruto doesn't really talk to anybody, his being chill and just not bothering anybody would actually lead him to getting a little bit of a girl following that Naruto actually ends up enjoying. With this, uh, with a couple more years, Naruto's hair would grow a lot longer and his muscle mass would end up increasing to the point where Naruto and Sasuke would pretty much be the biggest rivals of the academy. 
After a brief time skip to the day where the teams would all be selected, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura would all be assigned onto Team 7. And Naruto wouldn't have even been tricked by Mizuki about the little mission to take the scroll or any of that, just due to the fact that Naruto was not about to fall for that, plus he actually passed the academy this time. This version of Naruto is so much smarter and stronger than our canon one, it's not even funny. And at this point, he already looks like a really young version of Rayleigh, with long hair and no scar quite yet, but he will be getting one soon. And you know, glasses to go along with the look. He has this really cool purple drip that he likes to use, and the girls, they love it. Granted, the dude is young, so he doesn't really, he's not able to really do much with his uh, good looks or any of that, but you know, he, he, he does his best. That said though, eventually once they're all assigned to Team 7, Sasuke would look to Naruto and not know whether he dislikes him or likes him at all. Just due to the fact that he knows they're similar in their upbringing, but he doesn't like how strong Naruto is and how they're both pretty much on an equal level. Or so Sasuke thinks, because Naruto has never exactly let out his full strength. Not wanting to essentially show all of his cards on the playing field, Naruto has decided to pretty much just keep an even level with Sasuke. That said, Naruto would go on to essentially leave the classroom with Sasuke in a, in a, in a train of thought and Sakura trying to get him out on a date. He would decline telling her that she's annoying and following this little situation, the very next day would come by when they would finally meet their sensei Kakashi. Naruto doesn't end up pulling off the prank because he's more of a serious person now and he ends up pretty much just introducing himself to the team alongside Sasuke and Sakura as well as Kakashi. Once he ends up finding out what these te what you know his his team exactly is all about, Kakashi ends up essentially telling all of them that tomorrow they're going to be having to meet him at the training grounds because they are all going to be having to essentially um how do I put this? They're all going to essentially have to show him, you know, what um, what they know and prove to him that they deserve to be ninjas. Everybody kind of begins to kind of have this understanding of, okay, so we're all just going to have to show our skills individually. And that would be the ideal premise that everyone's going by. They would all be split up and following this little situation, the very next day they would all arrive. Naruto ends up getting there at the right time. And when Kakashi doesn't arrive, Naruto just sits down by a tree puts his hand over his knee and you know his hair is just blowing in the wind sakura looks at naruto after you know sasuke rejects her and when she takes a good look at naruto and finally lets it all in she thinks wow naruto's like even cuter than sasuke but then she's like no 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 no, no. i can't i can't do that to sasuke sasuke's sasuke's mine that's 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 as for eno pig she can have him and then from here naruto just passes out and she just is looking at him She's like, wow, it looks, looks pretty good. But Sasuke notices this and actually gets kind of jealous due to the fact that, you know, even though he doesn't like Sakura, he doesn't like the fact that Naruto's stealing his girls. So essentially, Sasuke ends up looking at Sakura and talking to her a little bit. So she immediately comes back to Sasuke and just she's wrapped around his finger. That said, though, a couple hours would pass on and eventually Kakashi Sensei would arrive to the training grounds to tell you all about not a sponsor, but something that I really just want to tell you guys all about. Now, recently, there's probably going to be some images up on screen, so I would probably click onto the video to, check, to for this specific part. But recently, I went onto TikTok, and as a, as anybody else does, I've been getting a lot of targeted anime ads, like a lot of anime clothing ads. I ended up once upon a time, uh, you know, pretty much wandering across this ad of this company by the name of Some Slight Clothing, and let me tell you. I immediately fell in love. Bro, I have literally spent over $200 wor worth of money on their website just because of how good their stuff is. They're not even sponsoring me. I don't even have an affiliate link. So all, all I can tell you guys is I'll probably put the link to the website down below in the pinned comment. But seriously, get yourself some sick anime shorts. They have the Tanjiro print, Inosuke print. No, 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 not Inosuke, but Zenitsu. They have the Giyu's Hashira print. They have the most fire and let me tell you fire do flamingo print shorts i will put the picture up on screen like i'm literally wearing them right now as we speak and they have like luffy print they have the tanjiro like blue with the cloud print it's so sick i literally gifted those to my dad but if you guys want to check out their website i'll leave a link down below and you guys can go check out their shorts and see what all the hype's about i recommend going true to size and with that little tangent out of the way let's get back into the video 
So, uh, yeah, let's get back into the video. What, what, what was I doing again? Oh, yeah. Kakashi goes on to explain the purpose of the bell test to the squad. After hearing this, the team would basically all be in agreement that they're going to try to do their best to essentially show off that they can do it. Naruto decides that maybe this might be the time to show a little bit more of his cards on the table. And so, Naruto decides to actively just stand right there, like not even go to hide like Sasuke and Sakura would. As Kakashi takes notice of this with his book in his hand, he looks up and asks if he's going to do anything. Naruto just stands there and says, I don't know. And from here, Naruto goes on to reach for this back as he takes this long sword out and pretty much ends up holding it towards Kakashi. As he then proceeds to say, you ready old man? And Kakashi looks at him and thinks, I'm not even that old. But from here, Naruto lunges at him and swings his sword, to which Kakashi jumps back easily and then takes a kunai out to, no, no, no kunai. Matter of fact, no kunai. Kakashi goes on to essentially just jump back and dodge it without even take looking up from his book. Which leads Naruto to think, oh, so I can let out just a little bit more power, I guess. He finally ends up getting a little bit more serious and rushing him with this high, like a higher amount of speed that Sasuke had never seen before, and a speed that Sasuke can't even move at. And this would cause Kakashi to actually have to put his book away and actually actively engage in fighting against Naruto with his kunai. He ends up doing so and they engage in a pretty badass battle in which Naruto uses his observation hockey to pretty much read Kakashi like a book. Eventually Kakashi realizes that Sasuke's or no Naruto's sensory capabilities are off the charts and he ends up inevitably revealing a Sharingan, going on to pretty much start actually decimating Naruto when it comes to the hand to hand fighting stuff. Naruto eventually, once he starts getting hit more and more by Kakashi, would actually kick Kakashi away, and Kakashi lunges in towards Naruto as he goes on to swipe at Naruto with a kunai. When he does this, Naruto would close his eye, and Kakashi, might I add, by accident, would end up slashing one of Naruto's eyes, not exactly getting rid of it, but just leaving him a scar. When Naruto like does this, he he pretty much goes on to like go down on the ground and be like, "My eye." And Kakashi, you know, he looks towards Naruto. He's like, are you okay, Naruto? But Naruto would simply smile as with both eyes open, he goes on to grab both bells and then kick Kakashi away and say, that was for my eye. As Kakashi rolls off the dirt and ends up pretty much revealing that uh, he had his bells stolen. He looks at his bells and is just thinking, this kid is impressive. Naruto then looks to Sasuke and Sakura. He would then say, you guys can come out now. The, the test is done, we passed. As he then goes on to toss one to Sakura, and he tosses one to Sasuke, saying that that's it, right? As Kakashi would then go on to say no, they actually failed. The purpose of this whole thing was something else that they didn't even understand, and that, you know, uh, they didn't even work together. Naruto says, oh, that sounds good then. I'll just go back to the academy. These two can pass without me, it doesn't matter. And after hearing those words from Naruto's mouth, Kakashi thinks about it a bit, realizing, you know what, maybe this team might be worth it after all, and he ends up deciding that they will pass. He then goes on to inform them that from now on, they are going to be known as Team 7, and they're now going to inevitably start going on D-rank missions for about two weeks before inevitably, they get assigned to the Bridge Builder Tazuna Protection Mission, which ends up going down just like many of you guys would expect. They meet him, he talks a little bit of smack on them, he looks at Naruto and tells him, Oi mate, your hairline is clapped! <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. No, but seriously, he then goes on to basically roast Naruto, or whatever, roast Sakura the most of all, and then eventually, the Team 7 would end up meeting him by the bridge going off on their journey only to end up encountering the two demon brothers like pretty early on into the journey realizing that more than just a couple of bandits are actually going to be encountered during this mission kakashi actually ends up questioning tazuna asking him what exactly the true nature of this mission is and zabuza or no not zabuza but tazuna would end up inevitably having to tell kakashi because he was pretty much discovered as soon as the two demon brothers rushed them kakashi knew something was up and what inevitably happened during that small encounter is when the demon brothers pretty much took out kakashi quote unquote naruto simply took out his blade and inevitably rushed at one of them only to slice him right on the chest and then like pretty much using his observation hockey noticed that um what's it called 
that one of the demon brothers was about to attack Sakura, but Sasuke got in the way and protected her. Looking like a total badass, Naruto would have a smirk on his face as he then landed on the ground and Kakashi revealed himself to be there. Following this little situation, they go on to continue with the trip after the Team 7 goes on to say that they want to continue, and after Kakashi not really having any objections to this, they all end up inevitably going on with the mission, going on to essentially say that they're just going to try their best and hopefully they don't run into anyone too dangerous. About an hour into the mission happens, inevitably we get this fog that ends up arriving all over the place, and when this happens, a gigantic blade comes in faster than anybody can see and before even kakashi could sense this blade naruto would go on to say everybody dodge or no not dodge but duck as everybody does so and the blade would end up pretty much getting uh cut into like a piece of wood as zabuza reveals himself and says kakashi hatake i always knew i'd run into you someday kakashi goes on to say zabuza momoichi oh it's not exactly pleasant to be meeting you here and then from here, Zabuza goes on to essentially just toy with Team 7 for a bit until eventually Kakashi goes on to tell the team that he's going to actually try this time. And he's going to, you know, pretty much be defending them. Just telling Naruto and Sasuke to protect the bridge builder. Naruto and Sasuke look to Tazuna as they would say, right. And Kakashi would then say, let's get this on then. Following the last part's ending, we essentially jump into a situation that would go something like this. Kakashi and Zabuza's fight ends up pretty much being just like it does in the original, and what ends up happening with Naruto and Sasuke is they simply watch on as their sensei essentially gets trapped in the water prison jutsu. After Kakashi gets caught up in this, he begins to essentially tell the team to please run away, telling them that they can't die. He will sacrifice himself and they can go. Immediately following this, Sakura would have fear in, in, in her eyes and she begins to actually question whether she should go or not. But Naruto and Sasuke both firm on their beliefs of not leaving their sensei behind after being told the wise words by Kakashi would inevitably end up deciding that they want to actually fight against, well, Zabuza. And before I continue on with the story, in case you guys notice a little bit of a difference in my voice, it's just because, I don't know, I just, I feel a little sick, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. But, uh... Basically, what ends up essentially going down, oh wait, uh, or, or maybe it might be that I just woke up. I'm not sure, but um, uh, it's pretty hard to do my YouTube voice when I'm sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, uh, basically, Naruto and Sasuke both end up creating the same plan that they would have in canon. Naruto ends up being thrown like a shuriken, and then there's a shuriken behind the shuriken that causes Zabuza to have to let go of the, you know, the hand. Naruto not knowing about water walking ends up not exactly being a big help in this situation and the Zabuza versus Kakashi fight ends up going down just like it would in canon. Zabuza and Haku both end up making their way out of that situation and inevitably Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura and Kakashi with the bridge builder would end up making their way towards Tazuna's house to simply just relax for a couple of days while Kakashi recuperates his loss of chakra. They go on to do so and in the first day of arriving there, once they're getting ready to have dinner and such, the first person that Naruto would end up meeting would be Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter. Following this, he would go on to meet a boy by the name of Inari, who jumps into the kitchen and immediately begins disrespecting Team 7, telling them all that they are all going to die. After hearing these words, Naruto would, look, would stand up from the table as he would look at the boy and ask him how old he is. The boy says, what do you care? And from here, Naruto goes on to tell him, from what it looks like to me, it looks like you, from my deduction, are about 10 years old, if not seven. You're like seven, year, seven to eight years old, right? You lost somebody special to you, and now you're a whiny little brat. Let me go on to tell you something, kid. The world doesn't revolve around you. The world will throw things at you left and right, and you'll never be ready for it. It's going to beat you down to a pulp, and some people have it worse than others. They do. Some people grow up without parents. Some people grow up without family. Some people don't grow up at all. Kid, you're lucky to even be alive right now. I know some kids who would have died on, on certain occasions and other kids that had a worse childhood than you. I'm one of those kids that had a hard life just like you but i didn't choose to start crying and be in my sorrows about it i chose to do something inar after hearing these words from naruto would begin trying to run away but naruto would grab him by the arm and look at him deep in his eyes with a stare that could only convey de determination tell him take a good look at yourself in the mirror before you ever talk down onto somebody else for doing the thing that you should have done a long time ago 
you would have been training ever since that day, maybe you would be strong enough to stop them yourself. Inari goes on to leave the area crying and everybody just sits there in silence while Naruto goes on to sit back down and enjoy his food. Following this little situation, Tsunami and Tazuna would apologize for Inari's actions and Naruto would look at them before telling them that he needs to be toughened up. The real world doesn't work the way he sees it. He then looks at Tazuna and says, and you should know this better than anyone else. If you raise that boy the same way you've been doing it, you're dooming him for failure. Somewhere along the lines, he's going to meet an obstacle that he won't be able to overcome by himself, and he will fail. Tazuna and Tsunami hearing this would both kind of understand what Naruto was getting at, and following this little situation, everybody just kind of goes on to have a little bit of an awkward lunchtime or meal. Eventually, after about a week, Kakashi ends up waking up from his chakra depletion, and once he does so, he ends up teaching the team about tree walking and also uh, teaching them a little bit of uh, taijutsu and all that stuff for the team to actually practice by themselves. They go on to do so for a little bit of time, and eventually what ends up going down following this is basically everybody get, learns their tree walking abilities. Naruto and Sasuke, still just like in the original, would have struggled just because Naruto being Rayleigh's reincarnation isn't going to fix his uh, his chakra control magically. It just doesn't work like that. It might make him be incredibly talented at hockey, hockey sorry, but not chakra. <laughs> That said though, eventually the day would come when everybody kind of ends up making their way towards the bridge, right? Everybody's at the bridge, they're doing their thing, including Naruto, mind you. And what essentially ends up happening is Inari and Tsunami are back at the house by themselves when the bandits end up arriving, and this time around, Inari's not having it. When he sees his mother get taken away, Inari pretty much, thinking back to the words that Naruto says, would think, I have to do something about it. And so he ends up leaving the house, leaving his mother to just be with the guys by themselves and inevitably rushing over towards the villagers to ask for help. A huge mob of them arrive and they end up beating the, the bandits senseless. While currently Naruto, Sasuke and the rest of the team are pretty much just at the bridge awaiting for Zabuza to eventually arrive. He would arrive in about 10 minutes when the area would get very, very foggy. And as soon as it begins getting like that, Kakashi would end up using a jutsu, which would dispel the fog immediately, making it so that the fog is not half as thick as it would have been in the original, courtesy of Naruto asking if he has anything like that. Kakashi, after doing so, would then engage in a battle against Sabuza, using a Sharingan off rip as Sasuke and both Naruto would end up engaging in a battle against Haku. Now, this time around, Haku isn't only fighting against Sasuke, who's like kinda semi-holding back, but no, this time around he's fighting against Naruto and Sasuke, who are both trying their best to actively defeat, you know, Haku. What ends up essentially going down after a while of them going back and forth with their chakra clashes and taijutsu battle and all, and, a, and all, what ends up essentially going down is basically after a while, Haku gets tired of this and eventually ends up slamming his hand onto the ground, screaming, Ice Crystal Mirror! Demonic Jutsu! As from here, a bunch of mirrors would end up arriving, and since Naruto didn't meet Haku this time around, as soon as this happens, they both begin trying their best to dodge, but inevitably, a bunch of Senban needles would end up piercing through their skins, due to the fact that Sasuke can't exactly track them, and Naruto was getting, with so, was getting hit with so many at the same time that his observation hockey, while very developed, is not exactly high enough that he can just dodge everything immediately. This would actually serve as a period of breaking through his limits for Naruto. As Sasuke ends up pretty much unlocking a Sharingan to be able to dodge this, Naruto would end up pretty much developing his observation hockey to the next level through combat itself, going on to eventually begin dodging the Senban from Haku, which would lead Haku to finally say, fine then I guess I should step it up, as Haku goes on to throw tons of Senban towards the direction of Sasuke, and Sasuke wouldn't be able to dodge, they're way too fast for even a Sharingan to track and what ends up happening is Naruto jumps in the way and using his armament hockey would harden his skin so that he was able to pretty much repel the Senban off of his body. A ton of them would end up piercing Sasuke and this would lead to Sasuke appearing dead. <clears throat> and after this happens, Naruto inevitably falls into a state of bloodlusted and nine tails rage mode which would lead Naruto to inevitably pretty much end up snapping Haku like a twig before Haku gets the opportunity to actually defeat or not, not defeat anybody, but more or less sacrifice his life for Zabuza. Following this, you could just hear a Chidori in the background as Kakashi would scream, Chidori, 
And from here, Zabuza's heart would be pierced as simultaneously Haku's head would be caved in by a punch from Naruto, using armament hockey in 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 hand with the chakra that he's currently letting out so they would have essentially decimated zabuza's squad and about 10 minutes or no a couple minutes following this zabuza's uh <clears throat> boss gato ends up arriving and pretty much saying that he wasn't going to pay him anyways with zabuza and haku both dead this leaves only team seven to handle it but seeing as Naruto was still in a rage mode, he goes on to absolutely decimate everybody in a way that Zabuza would have done so, going on to essentially destroy Gato in one of the most gruesome ways possible and get his first like 25 kills, which is pretty insane to think about seeing as he's just a kid. Actually, no, not even 25, more like 36 kills, right? And he then snaps out of it after all the rest of Gato's men end up running away with their tails behind their legs. Between their legs, sorry. But after this, he ends up pretty much going into unconsciousness and waking up back in the village in his room. He then goes on to ask what happened and Kakashi would go on to explain that, you know, nothing Naruto. Nothing happened. He passed out after chakra exertion. And Naruto then has these visions of Haku and how he brutally defeated him. Naruto would think to himself, I can't believe I did that. And Kakashi would tell him that it was in the heat of the moment. He can't judge himself harshly for that. In a ninja world, it has to be... Naruto would finish his sentence. Done. Yeah, I know. I won't fret on this too long, Kakashi. Just let me know when the next mission is and I'd like to be left alone. From here, Kakashi leaves the room and Naruto and Team 7 never ends up encountering the Suna squad as early as they would have before. So essentially, they end up inevitably being told by Kakashi about the events of the Chunin exams. They end up all agreeing to take part in said event and from here, they end up going towards the Chunin exams tower on said day. When they all end up pretty much arriving, they end up encountering a boy with bushy eyebrows and a bowl haircut. He ends up challenging Sasuke, asking him to battle him, seeing as he is the last Uchiha. And Sasuke ends up, well, accepting. His ego is so big and he wants to stroke his ego a little bit. So, you know, he wants to defeat this bushy haired brow kid. So he ends up engaging in battle with Rock Lee, only to be utterly defeated by him and have his hopes just completely crushed and drained. The dude... It was not a good time for Sasuke to say the least. Pretty much what happens in the original goes on to happen and eventually Team 7 would end up finding themselves in the exam area only for Kabuto to come in and bother them telling them about how he has information on everybody. This goes on to happen for a little bit longer and then what ends up happening following this is basically um, everybody goes on to take the written test. Now, this would go just like many of you guys are probably expecting. Nothing really goes down, and eventually we cut to the situation when they're all finding themselves in the forest of death. The team would be running across tree to tree when suddenly, Naruto, using his observation hockey and sensory abilities, would actually be able to detect a large amount of killing intent rushing towards them at incredible speeds. As soon as Naruto notices this, he would look back to Sasuke and Sakura and tell them, to not be afraid because something is coming their way. Suddenly, a man on top of a snake would end up appearing right before him as he goes on to attack Naruto, who would simply jump up into the air, grab his sword, and slice the head of the snake off promptly before turning to the direction of Sasuke, who's frozen in fear in front of Orochimaru. He goes on to stab himself to let his body move, and following this, he then goes on to try to hide from Orochimaru. Naruto at this moment would see Orochimaru begin pretty much going after Sasuke, but Naruto appears before Orochimaru and tells him, your battle's with me. He then goes on to use armament hockey on his fists, as he then rushes towards the direction of Orochimaru with his blade on his back, and then begins to throw a haymaker blow at Orochimaru's direction, which causes Orochimaru to actually have to jump back a bit in order to dodge it. Suddenly, though, Orochimaru then begins to uh, pretty much unveil his incredible taijutsu prowess, and goes on to eventually proceed to essentially dismantle Naruto in a lot of ways and shapes and forms. Eventually, after defeating Naruto more and more, Naruto would begin to realize that if he doesn't win this battle, it's Sasuke's life, which will be lost, as well as his own. So Naruto, after this, in a moment of desperation, would actually end up activating Conqueror's Haki. Being backed up into a corner by Orochimaru, Naruto would unleash a large amount of Conqueror's Haki, which would actually stun Orochimaru into pretty much not being able to move. I mean, his will is high enough to the point where he doesn't pass out, but Orochimaru is just shocked. 
and Naruto's eyes would actually grow slit-like as he looks towards the direction of Orochimaru and says, You are not touching Sasuke! He comes rushing in with his blade and he ends up actually cutting off the head of Orochimaru in one fell swoop. As he ends up appearing behind him in anime swordsman style and Sasuke watched the whole thing go down as he was helpless to do a thing about it. Orochimaru didn't have the chance to place the curse mark on Sasuke's neck and he dies quote unquote in the forest of death but not really because if you really think about it he's Orochimaru and he's never really gonna die like he never dies it doesn't I don't think even like Kage Naruto could kill Orochimaru the man comes back to life every 10 minutes so can't exactly kill the dude off that said though what does actually end up happening however is basically Naruto would go on to pretty much like like fall down to one knee due to chakra absorption and Sasuke and Sakura are actually tasked with having to actually hold on to Naruto and take him towards the direction of the area where the bell test will be uh where, where the tuning exams actually take go place take place in right Halfway along the way, they end up encountering the sound Ganon, and when they do encounter them, Naruto has to get up from his rest. He gets up weakly and ends up pretty much telling Sasuke that they'll handle it. Sakura goes on to pretty much be like, no, Naruto, Sasuke, I can help, but they both look at her and tell her to stay out of it. Following this, they go on to essentially engage in a battle with the sound Genin, and what ends up pretty much happening is Naruto has to once again let out the power of the QB just because his base power alone being drained just wasn't enough. So with the power of the QB, after Sasuke got his butt handed to him, Naruto was able to actually defeat the sound Genin, and Sasuke once again watched as he was helpless to do anything while Naruto saved them yet again. That was two times in one day. He gets pretty angry and they all end up going back towards the tower only to meet Iruka sensei and Kakashi and following this little situation they eventually end up having about one day to rest so Naruto's chakra levels would heal back up and Naruto would end up feeling good and rested. The very next day it's unveiled to them that they're going to be having to take pace in preliminaries and Naruto's battle against Kiba ends up going down like many of you guys would expect. Easy. Naruto would eventually end up making his way towards the stadium. Kiba, seeing that his opponent is Naruto, would have a smug look on his face and begin to think to himself that this is going to be easy. He looks to Akamaru and says, Akamaru! Akamaru barks at him and then begins to essentially do his man beast transformation. And Naruto would simply think to himself that Kiba hasn't matured a bit since they started. What ends up happening after this is Kiba screams, Fang over Fang! as both of them end up pretty much combining with each other and rushing at Naruto. But Naruto holding one arm out with armament hockey and chakra in boot to actually, you know, give his arm more strength, is able to actually hold them back with one arm only. As he then grabs both Akamaru and Kiba by the heads, and he just throws them away in opposite directions. Naruto immediately rush begins running towards their direction and saying, uh, what's it called? Mo uh, no, 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 not multi-shadow clone, but shadow clone jutsu! As he creates a shadow clone and it begins rushing towards the direction of Akamaru. As Naruto rushes in at Kiba and then kicks him up into the air one good time before then going on to combo him and knocking Kiba out promptly. Leaving Kiba to be taken away in a stretcher while Naruto was offered some ointment via Hinata who had a massive crush on him. Not only because he saved her as a little girl but because Naruto was stunningly good looking. That said though, what ends up essentially happening following this little situation is all the rest of the battles happen like they would in canon. And yes, I mean all of them. Except for Sasuke who just has an easier time against his opponent since he doesn't have the curse mark, but that is what that is. And following this little situation, what ends up basically going down is everybody goes on their one month training arc, right? Naruto ends up meeting Jiraiya during this time and actually ends up learning the summoning jutsu as well as a little bit more control over the QB and way better skills when it comes to his taijutsu prowess, which is something that Jiraiya would be heavily impressed by Naruto's already high um, skills in taijutsu which was extremely impressive to Jiraiya because, I mean, he's never seen anything like this since Orochimaru. Orochimaru was one of those few people who had just this unforeseen talent that was just too great to ignore. But Naruto was as if it was second nature. It was incredible. This boy was going to be something someday. 
Naruto would also work on his hockey, such as observation and armament hockey, in order to essentially grow his rate of usage with it, gain more power, gain more conquerors hockey. Just all in all, become a better, you know, opponent for other people, a stronger man. He ends up actually refining his swordsman skills, and by the time that he ends up going back for his battle against Neji, after the one month period would be over, it essentially turns out to be a one-sided squash. I mean, obviously, we know Neji is a close range fighter, and Naruto doesn't exactly have a ton of jutsus for long range. So what does Naruto have to do? He has to get up close and personal. And you know what Naruto would say to Neji? He would say, you know, Neji, if we would have fought and you didn't do what you did to Hinata, this wouldn't have been as personal as it is. He takes out his blade, and it's actually revealed to be a katana this time, as Naruto holds it with a backwards grip, and he then says, well... This is it for you, Neji. He holds out a, a hand sign and then he immediately then proceeds to say, uh, he proceeds to use like a wind bullet jutsu to shoot it at Neji. As Neji is basically able to just simply jump out of the way and then look up as he sees Naruto before him instantly, who then goes on to essentially slash Neji right across the chest faster than Neji could have reacted. Keep in mind, Neji is one of the fastest Genin in the series and it took a ton of Jonin to even stop him from attacking Hinata. So Naruto being able to attack Neji and press him the way that he just did it, is impressive in every way shape and form so naruto after landing this this slash on a neji's chest would kick him away right on same said chest and neji would go tumbling down onto the ground rolling around in dirt as he begins to essentially get up weakly and naruto then asks neji if he still feels so high and mighty before neji goes on to tell him that he knows nothing that he will still lose that that was just a major setback and Naruto says, eh, are you now? Before finally revealing that there was a clone behind him. Neji dodges uh, weakly and is able to dodge because of his Byakugan. But Naruto would then go on to rush once more. And without even using his sword, but literally just coming in and like pimp slapping Neji. Pretty much hits him with armament hockey, setting him crashing into the wall. As Neji gets completely just knocked out. And Naruto is declared the winner. Following Naruto's just devastating victory over Neji, we now get into the battles between Sasuke and Gaara. And I'm guessing many of you guys already know what's going to happen. The same thing that happened in the original with Sasuke running up the tuning tower and then pretty much rushing down, screaming, Chidori! Ends up basically happening, causing Gaara's sand shield to break and Gaara's blood to leak. From here, the man starts going crazy, being like, my blood, and then fucking goes into the forest, freaking out, like, just, you guys get the point, right? He goes into the forest, he starts freaking out, he starts whining like a little girl, and then Sasuke goes after him. We then have the two sand siblings chase after him, and Naruto would be one of the people who unfortunately ends up going after Sasuke, instead of saving somebody worthwhile like Hiruzen. Eh, never mind, it's... Well, give or take, kind of, because Sasuke's young, Hiruzen already has one foot in, 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 in death's door, so yeah, never mind, Naruto did make the right choice. Okay, but yeah, check me out. So basically what happens is the, um, what's it called, uh, what's that one dude's name with the bugs? Oh yeah, Shino. Shino ends up finding Kankuro, and uh, someone else ends up finding Tamari, so then Naruto's able to arrive there right in time to save Sasuke from getting killed by Gara. And as soon as he does this, Sasuke would look to Naruto with his ungrateful self and be like, Get out of here, Naruto. I didn't need your help. But Naruto would just look back to Sasuke before saying, <laughs> Sure, you did it. As he then grabs a sword and rushes in at Gara, using observation hockey to dodge his blows, then goes on to cut Gara's sand arm off, leaving Gara to get angrier and angrier the more that Naruto would dodge and weave his attacks. It was as if Naruto was looking right right uh through his attacks as if he could see what was happening before it even happened and uh that's exactly what was happening naruto was pretty much using observation hockey in the way that katakuri did so that he could basically dodge everything that he threw at him and just make gara look like a laughing stock this forces gara to get angrier and angrier until inevitably he ends up letting shukaku take over going into his one-tailed shukaku state mode when Naruto sees this as strong and powerful as he is, he knows that he's not going to be defeating some giant mountain looking thing. So he immediately like bites down on his thumb and says, summoning jutsu as Gamabunta appears right underneath him. 
and he then goes on to ask him what he's doing there. Naruto then tells him that they're going to be fighting a tailed beast and if he's ready, and Gamabunta would smirk before saying, you kidding, I was born ready. From here, he takes out a sword and then goes on to take uh, the battle against Shukaku, fighting him in a pretty even playing field until eventually he turns into Kurama via the transformation jutsu. <gasps> uh, sorry. And he then grabs onto Shukaku, long enough for Naruto to blitz in there and then get grabbed by Gara's sand. As Gara was pretty much freaking out, like trying to crush Naruto with the sand, but Naruto simply would use his... Uh, his insane off the chart strength to break out of it and then would form a shadow clone which would then rush over towards Gara and punch him square in the side of the head knocking some sense back into Gara, leading him to wake up and Naruto to look at Gara on the ground and pretty much talk no jutsu him into submission as soon as this goes down Naruto is finally able to eventually kind of just talk to Gara, I guess you could say and tell him hey so this is how things are you either chill out or I kill you Gara ends up pretty much calming down, and then Naruto returns to the village only to find out that Hiruzen's, well, dead. They then go on to have the funeral, and Jiraiya then asks Naruto to come with him to retrieve Tsunade. And during this time, I also want to mention that Sasuke, still, again, does not have the curse mark. So this is actually going to be helping us a lot when it comes to the future. This little portion with Naruto and Jiraiya pretty much goes down just like it would in canon. Naruto goes on to learn the Rasengan the entirety of their trip there. And with Jiraiya being very vague in his key, key tips and tricks to Naruto for forming the Rasengan, it pretty much ends up taking Naruto the same time to learn it. Except this time around, he doesn't need a Shadow Clone and he can actually form it with one hand. Just because having the handicap of needing a Shadow Clone to form a Rasengan is pretty dumb. At least that's what I think. But he does do his thing, and eventually the day would come where Itachi and Kisame would arrive. They end up pretty much pressing Naruto in the hotel room, and Naruto just goes on to essentially hold them off long enough for Jiraiya to arrive, saving him and Sasuke together. Following this, they end up finally meeting uh, Tsunade, and this encounter pretty much goes down just like you guys would expect it in canon. The only real change to the story here is that the difficulty level is, like, low diff at best. Eh, mid difficulty at best, just because it's Kabuto. I'm, I'm gonna throw him a bone and say it's a mid diff battle, but Naruto ends up slamming Arasengan into him and destroying him, leading Orochimaru to have to retrie retrieve with Kabuto, and you know, once again, have his plans foiled by this kid with some strange abilities. That said, though, what ends up pretty much happening following this little situation is basically they end up returning back to the village, only to find out. Hey, surprise, surprise, as soon as Sasuke wakes up after having his hatred amplified by his dumb big brother who made the dumbest plan to make Sasuke grow stronger. Like, if you hate me, oh, I, I just can't get over how dumb Itachi's plan was to make Sasuke stronger. Like, he could have gotten stronger in another way and probably would have gained even more power. But instead, he chose to leave the village that literally made Shinobi like Itachi, Orochimaru, the legendary Sani, Minato, Hashirama. Like, bro, this village be birthing some of the most powerful Shinobis of all time. Yet you leave for some dude, some 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 weird closet pervert. I, I, I just can't. Anyways, though, basically what ends up happening is as soon as he wakes up, he gets the offer from the Sound 4 Ninjas telling him, Hey, buddy, buddy, yeah, come here, come here, come here. Sasuke ends up getting closer to them, you know, in the alleyway. And they're like, you should buy some of this stuff, buddy. You know, you should really, you know, consider buying this stuff. Sasuke takes a good whiff. He's like, <laughs> and then follow him here. He just gets addicted to the power. He's like, all right, I'll come with you. He ends up deserting the village. Bing, bang, boom. We end up having the final battle at the Valley of the End. Naruto versus Sasuke with the final stand. And since Sasuke doesn't have the curse mark this time around, when Naruto and Sasuke end up having the Shidori Rasengan clash, Naruto doesn't even need to tap into the QB mode. He doesn't need it. Like at all. Like, like at all. Even with you just using his observation hockey, he could have whooped them. But um, yeah. He ends up doing the Chidori Rasengan clash, breaking Sasuke's arm, and that's being generous. He probably would have destroyed the whole thing if I wasn't being as generous as I am. But he shatters like literally every bone in Sasuke's arm and then drags him back alongside Kakashi back to the village. Following this, he ends up going on a three year time skip. And I'm guessing many of you guys are probably knowing what's going to happen during this little time skip. We get evolved Naruto. The man's hair is finally full length. 
He's he doesn't have the beard quite yet because you know the dude is like 16 right now So, you know not yet, but give him a couple like five four more years and he'll get that beard But he has a scar the long blonde hair the blue eyes Bro, my man Naruto's finna kill it with the ladies when he comes back to the village He ends up returning back to Kanoha where eventually he ends up finding out that you know Sasuke stayed he didn't actually end up trying anything after that He's pretty happy about that and that Gara got kidnapped again bro this man gets like taken advantage of like every five minutes bro like stop bro you are a shinobi but naruto and team seven alongside sasuke have to go save Gara. oh and also quick thing in case you guys are wondering how strong did naruto get over the time skip basically what naruto ended up achieving during this time was perfect shocker control he ended up getting way better at taijutsu he trained with a sword most of all, and he pretty much mastered all types of, of hockey, meaning armament hockey, observation hockey, and, and conquerors hockey to their fullest extent. He also knows how to create a black blade, and his long sword is one of his favorite blades. Pretty much the same sword that Rayleigh would have used at the, uh, I think it's the archipelago arc, or like, like basically where the straw heads get separated by Kuma. That's the sword that uh, Rayleigh's going to be, or no, not Rayleigh, but Naruto's going to be using to do all his battles from now on. From here, a lot of you guys are probably like, all right, so Team 7 is here. They're doing the Gar Retrieval mission. What exactly changes Zether? Well, I was thinking about that, and the more that I thought about it, I was like, yeah, what, what does change? And to put it simply, a couple of things and a couple of things don't change. See, after this mini time skip, Naruto ended up pretty much finding out a lot about the Akatsuki, right? He ended up finding out that they are a very dangerous group. They have been pretty much uh, capturing a bunch of tailed beasts over the years. And now they want to take Gar. So he's not liking this. And this is going to be his first encounter with the actual Akatsuki members themselves. So here's what I picture happens. We still have the encounter between Lady Chiho and Kakashi. She ends up finding out, oh, that's not uh, Sakumo or, or, or ha, so I think that's his name. Sakumo Hotake, I think. The White Fang. I don't know, but she ends up having that encounter. Sakura is able to heal Konkuro. They end up arriving. Sakura, you know, she puts her glove on or whatever. And then she goes, cha, and breaks the wall, revealing the Akatsuki members. Uh, Daedara, Daedara. He exists. He ends up flying out with this clay bird, but not before Naruto, using observation hockey, was able to jump up into the air and land on top of the bird alongside Daedara, leading to a really dope mid-air flying on top of a bird taijutsu clash between Daedara and Naruto, which obviously Daedara gets completely manhandled in because of Naruto's observation hockey. Not only that, but every time the Daedara would luckily land a hit or like uh, pretty much get parried by Naruto with his fists, he would feel an incredible amount of pain because of the armament hockey that is coating Naruto's body. Not only that, but Naruto is pretty much getting tired of the games. Essentially, Naruto ends up taking out one of the pages from Sasuke's book and pretty much taking off his sword, coating it with fire chakra as well as, uh, you know, armament hockey and basically slicing at Daedara's head. That, that, that whole thing comes clean off. It's done. And while Naruto was taking care of that, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura were fighting against Sasori. This time around, Sasori, I'm going to be saying, is actually able to go all out. Just because he's not just fighting some weak girl in Lady Chio, but actually a bunch of people. So the fight's actually a little bit more interesting, except it's not because now he gets washed even faster than in the original. But the Akatsuki 2 members that just got taken out pretty much gives Naruto a good basic idea of how powerful the Akatsuki members truly are. Naruto is now currently realizing that he needs to take out these Akatsuki members sooner rather than later. So what does Naruto do, you might ask? He ends up pretty much completing his mission, making his way back to the Hidden Leaf after Gara gets revived, of course, and to Lady Chiho. Rest in peace! But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, basically what ends up happening following this little situation ship is essentially Naruto goes on to train a little harder than he normally would. He ends up finding out about Itachi's situation with Sasuke actually wanting to go fight him. And so Naruto doesn't actually end up going off to help with Shikamaru's situation. 
Instead, I'm going to be saying that Kakashi vs Kakazu is basically the way that Kakazu gets defeated, and it is a high, and I mean astronomically high diff battle that Kakashi has to whip out the Mangekyo Sharingan for, and be bedridden for about 3 weeks for, because of how difficult the battle was. When it comes to Hidan, Shikamaru, like the G he is, would take him out single handedly. No help needed because the man is just a genius. But when it comes to Naruto and Sasuke, they're off busy trying to take care of Itachi and Kisame. Now, when it comes to Kisame, him being a sword person, I think it was perfect to have Naruto tag along with Sasuke, telling him that he can go, but Naruto's coming with him just in case anything happens. Sasuke got angry and he pretty much tried to leave alone, but Naruto just followed him. And once they made it to the section where Kisame told Naruto that only Sasuke can go, Naruto was like, yeah, get out of my way. I'm not playing these games. And, you know, Kisame put his hand on, on his shoulder, leading to Naruto kicking Kisame away, leading to Kisame grabbing the hilt of his sword and a smile would appear on his face. Naruto would then say, oh, you're a sword wielder. Let's see just how much you know. He holds his sword out and then goes on to essentially rush in at the direction of Kisame as he spins once and then slashes at the air and leading to Kisame essentially like countering it. But Naruto's Conqueror's Hockey would send Kisame flying into a wall, crashing into it, breaking tons of buildings. This would lead to Kisame wondering what that was and then like getting up and like kind of realizing that Naruto is just a little bit too strong for him. So he ends up kind of tapping into his like merge state where he ends up finally thinking that now he's going to have the upper hand. He ends up pretty much creating a huge vortex of water that leads them to be inside like this. He uses the jutsu, which let me explain. It creates this like a little domain of water for Kisame to be in, right? To make him move even faster and he's in there you know he 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 decides to use the strongest attack off rip saying you will pay the price die you know he rushes in and then we have naruto with one finger just blocking kisame's ultimate move with kisame being like marco after you know he tried his thing with his fink with his uh claws and stuff just being like shocked and then naruto just proceeds to essentially like throw him away and say you need at least another hundred years before you can fight me, young man. As he then rushes at the direction of Kisame and just proceeds to essentially knock the dude out. And by knock him out, I mean punch his head off because that's exactly what happened. The dude ran up at him with his armament hockey fist and hands and then just bam, just punched Kisame's head clean off of his body. Following this, he went on to go inside of the area where Sasuke was fighting Itachi. And he goes on to witness as Itachi's pretty much you know, getting closer and closer and closer to Sasuke. He goes on to tell him, I'm sorry, Sasuke, tapping his forehead and dying. Like, bro, why are you dying, bro? Dying is for chumps. You can't die, Itachi. Like, that's literally for chumps, bro. That is like, that. that's, that's not cool, bro. But yeah, Itachi dies, sadly, because the man just couldn't keep going. But then, after he dies, much like in the original, Obito ends up arriving and trying to pull some sneaky stuff by taking, you know, Sasuke away early, trying to essentially tell him about the secrets of the Uchiha clan, you know, Itachi's eyes, yada yada yada. But instead of that actually happening, I'm gonna be saying that Naruto actually steps in the way and in cool anime fashion, just stands before Sasuke, who at this point is pretty much grieving and looks at Obito and tells him, you're not getting even a step closer to Sasuke. Obito just tells him to get out of his way and phases through Naruto, but Naruto goes on to grab the back of Tobi's cloak and throw him away from Sasuke, then saying, like I said, you're not touching Sasuke. And Obito wonders how come his phasing ability like didn't work. Now, for this instant, I'm going to be saying that Naruto, because of observation hockey, is able to actually see where and when Obito's gonna, like, kind of, how do I put this, use his, like, Kamui ability, so he was able to pinpoint the exact spot where Naruto could actually pull by his cloak. After doing so, Obito goes on to say that he will die for his insolence, and then goes into rush at Naruto. And I'm just gonna say it right now, this is going to be literally a like 5 second clash, because Obito rushes in, and then goes on to essentially like use a kunai by trying to like kinda cut into Naruto and kill him with a quick quick strike, but Naruto was able, using observation hockey, dodge out of the way, and then kick Obito, which 
goes right through his body. But then suddenly Naruto moves so fast that Obito was like, yo, where, where did this? But before he could realize what had even happened, like Naruto would have quite literally already pierced his sword right in to the right into the back of Obito and then like just shoved it in deeper and deeper leading to Obito being like, oh, yeah. But Naruto would be like, yo, pause. And then, you know, the man just goes on to essentially use Conqueror's hockey to pretty much like, how do I put this? Like, stun Obito. Obito was shocked in position, and that gave Naruto more than enough time to just chop the dude's head clean off. Zetsu watching this nearby was like, yo, I gotta get out of here. But Naruto could sense Zetsu and pretty much appeared right before him, before then in OP protagonist fashion, just killing Zetsu. This only leaves people like Pain, Conan, uh, I, I think that's it when it comes to the Akatsuki. Pain and Conan are literally the only Akatsuki members left after this. So, yeah, um, go figures. The attack on the village of Konoha still ends up happening, but this time around, Naruto is still there. And after finding out that Jiraiya died, he was not playing no games. Not only that, but after realizing that, what's it called? Um, you know, Pain actually killed the entire village. This version of Naruto was not having no chill. He killed Nagato. He was not playing. Like, what a death for a death. Like, all the people that died in the uh, village attack thingy majigger, they stay dead. Because, I don't know. Me personally, I kind of feel like they should have stayed dead just for it to have felt more, like, tragic. I mean, I really didn't want Kakashi to die, but, you know, still, I, I kind of feel like them staying death kind of adds a little bit more spice to the overall narrative of the story. So I'm just going to be saying that they all stay dead and Naruto goes on to essentially destroy everybody. This would then lead to Kaguya's resurrection being essentially halted by, you know, Konoha and the other villages being like, yo, this Naruto kid, very OP. What do we do? But they realize they can't really do anything. Uh, Killer B ends up pretty much showing that he was alive the whole time. So Killer, uh, or no, uh, Raikage A doesn't actually end up doing anything. And bada bada bing boom, that's the end of today's story. What did you guys think? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Do you guys think that I kind of rushed the ending? Do you think that it was kind of perfect? Because, I mean, let's be real here. What exactly changes in Shippuden? The only real changes that happen to the story is always going to be Naruto's upbringing, the very beginning, because that's when Naruto's finding himself. And after the time skip, the Naruto with all these cool abilities that I end up throwing at him, it just makes everything like a hundred times easier. But if you do end up enjoying these Naruto X One Piece videos, make sure to stay tuned for my What If Naruto is Shanks reincarnation that's going to be coming out in about two days from today's upload. That said, I love each and every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace. Don't forget to smash that like button.